It's September and it's time for another edition of Core Connection, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers vlog that keeps you in the loop on what we're up to around the country and the world. I'm your host, Patrick Bloodgood, and we have a packed episode this month. So let's jump right into Core Connection. We start this month with a look overseas as the Europe District continues to highlight their resident offices that are responsible for delivering world-class facilities and engineering solutions to our forward deployed military personnel throughout the European continent. This month, the district examines Grafenwehr resident office in Germany. Hello, my name is Edwin Vasquez. I'm the resident engineer for Europe District's resident office here in Grafenwehr, Germany. So USACE works in this region all across Bavaria. Our resident office consists of four distinct offices uh, here in Grafenwehr, also in Ansbach, Hohenfels, and Garmisch. The type of work that we do in our area of responsibility include things like the school, like behind me, also Army family housing units, numerous renovations for admin spaces, new milcon work to upgrade um, the, the support capabilities of the, of the garrisons, as well as miscellaneous uh, repairs across uh, different buildings in, on the bases. So we have numerous customers. Our main customers are U.S. Army Garrisons Bavaria, which includes here in Grafenwehr, Hohenfels and Garmisch, but also U.S. Army Garrison Ansbach. And they support a big training mission and also support support services for battalions that, that rotate and are permanently located here. My biggest reward working on the projects here in, in Grafenwehr and in the Bavaria area is really working with, with the people. Given the long presence of the garrisons in the southeast portion of Germany, there's a, there's a, a big integration of the mission here, but also the culture. So my, um, my biggest reward is really um, getting to be part of that team. The resident office is also supporting our nation's military children, managing the construction of a state-of-the-art elementary school for the Department of Defense education activity in Grafenwehr. The new school is set to open in November. Hello, my name is Wes Clark. I'm a project engineer at uh, Grafenwehr resident office. This is the new uh, Grafenwehr Elementary School for Dodea. As part of our energy and technology advancements in construction, the building incorporates a uh, movable uh, photovoltaic panel as well as a wind station with weather reporting that will um, announce and, and display throughout the building for the teachers to use as a teaching model for the students uh, promoting STEM. This building transitioned to the 21st century uh, teaching model. The uh, open concept uh, with the movable uh, glass partition walls and um, marker board walls, uh, they're available in the school to open up and uh, use as an integrated teaching model. The project is nearly 95% complete. The contractor is working through closeout items and uh, commissioning, testing, and furniture move-in to prepare for turnover for the customer. USACE is a diverse organization, both in its mission set and its professionals. The Norfolk District had a chance to sit down with the 2022 USACE Architect of the Year, Drew Gebler, to discuss his contribution as an architect to the overall USACE mission. So here at the Norfolk District, and especially in the architecture section, you know, we are really a project-driven and a project-funded organization. And a really unique aspect of it, one thing I like to think about is, you know, these projects are as much for you and me, everyone on the team, as much as it is for our stakeholders. You know, we are all part of this, we're taxpayers, and that brings a unique perspective to how we do things. When I first started out in 2015, most of the mission at that time for us was really focused on military construction. Since then, in the past several years, the MILCON program has slowed down slightly and our civil works program has really ramped up. 
as you know, sea level rise is a, is a big deal. And uh, the Corps of Engineers is really tasked with how to help our, our, our country and our cities protect themselves against future sea level rise and the current flooding we're experiencing. So you might ask yourself, why is an architect necessary to do a flood protection project uh, or a resiliency project for sea level rise? And we've always looked to provide visualization to help our customers understand what is it that this building or this project is gonna look like at the end of the day? And is this what you really want? When you have a, a, a levee or, or a flood wall that you're looking to construct in an urban context inside a city, it's really important how that wall is located, where are the openings, what's the elevation in relationship to the pedestrian movement and the walkways. And so we've been able to take these tools that we use to do renderings and 3D visualizations and provide those for these civil works projects to help stakeholders, cities, and designers understand what are the impact and how do we make that into a building that meets the customer's needs, that's functional, that's economical, and that is something that's going to stand the test of time. Architects are but one career area your U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is in need of. To learn more about what careers USACE has and what openings are available, go to www.usace.army.mil forward slash careers. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Buffalo District recently completed an environmental project to help a small but critically important fish get upstream along the Niagara River. Based on some initial data, the future for this fish is looking bright. Here along the Niagara River, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers constructed a novel fish passage structure as part of the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative completing construction in February 2022. The purpose of this structure is to help emerald shiners, a very small but critically important prey fish, overcome an obstacle to swim upstream. Pre- and post-construction monitoring has been conducted and continues. However, preliminary results are very positive. Spring monitoring shows a significant increase in emerald shiners compared to the pre-construction survey and underwater video footage readily shows schools of emerald shiner moving throughout the constructed fish passage structures. As monitoring continues, the potential groundwork has been established to look at extending the project along the remaining 700 feet of seawall here at Broderick Park. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has collaborated and appreciates the help of our partners at the University of Buffalo, Buffalo State, the City of Buffalo, and the U.S. EPA. Stay tuned for additional updates as we monitor the results of this project. That finishes off this episode of Core Connection. We started this nearly two years ago, and we hope you have found it useful and informative. Thanks for watching, and we will be back again next month for Season 3 of Core Connection. Until then, I'm Patrick Bloodgood, and this has been Core Connection.